Hi everybody, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leah Catherine, this is Leah Sees Movies, and we are back with the final episode of Young Justice. This has been two years in the making. Um, I'm kind of shocked I, I did it. Um, it feels like an accomplishment. I'm shocked that there are people who have been watching this entire time and then the comments every week and um, it's just, it's meant a lot to me. Um, that anyone has enjoyed this and has been enjoying it for literally years now. So um, I'm going to start this off with a thank you because um, wowzers. Anyway, let's go back to what happened in the last episode, which is we were in a very bad place for our heroes. Uh, Rocket is uh, actually dead, I think. Dick is not dead at all. You can't convince me otherwise. I No. Connor is still brainwashed and potentially can only be convinced to turn back to uh, himself, his true self, uh, with the power of love, or will just continue to be manipulated by another evil father figure in Lex Luthor. Either way, kind of funny. It was it was looking real real bad for Kal El as Connor has his hands around his neck and is ready to snap it on live TV. The rest of the Justice League presumably will be flying in to prevent that. I don't know what their response time is like, but we do know that there's a a Zeta tube and. Met Metropolis, right? So at the very least, if they can Zeta there, they could get there pretty quickly, avoid traffic. The rest of our team are now back on Earth, which means they're not in the Phantom Zone, which means if we open another boom tube to the Phantom Zone, we could actually get more Kryptonians escaping. I don't think we're going to. I, I, I feel like that would be too much, right? They already have Zod. They already have Baby Zod. They already have Ursa Zod, who is now the Green Empress of... Uh, I don't know, Hobbiton or whatever. And yeah, I feel like they're not gonna up the stakes even more by adding an actual army of Kryptonians. At the very least, they're not gonna do that unless it's a cliffhanger, um, which I really, really hope it's not. And gosh, I really, I don't know how we're gonna wrap this up. Like I am, I'm out of ideas. Well, that's a lie, I have so many ideas. I've been bombarding you guys with my ideas, but I, I have no surety in any of them. I have no confidence in any of these selections. I, I think I'm gonna be surprised. I hope I'm gonna be happy because this is this is the end. Um, yeah, so on that, I don't know, that feels like it took a dark turn, but on that note, I'm going to stop talking. Let's get started. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I went to hit play, but I accidentally hovered over the end of the video um, and I saw dark side, so spoiler alert. <laughs> Literally was just trying to hit play, but so dark sides in this Which still kind of lends credence to my theory that the light's gonna be the one that intervenes All right, we'll see Starting in on Connor's eyes What's he gonna do? Obviously, he doesn't know about Dick, but he does. He he saw Dick bleeding. But where Kal El, the Superman, failed to take his place as humanity's god. I love like he says that like that's a real moral failing on <laughs> on Superman's part. Like obviously, he should have become a god. What a loser! In the blood of your failed savior. This man said, "Where is his sense of Kryptonian pride?" Why is he like orange? Is that supposed to be bruising? Maybe they should go on for like more of a purpley tone because he looks like he has a rash. Five minutes earlier. Look, he's not dead. <sighs> sorry, sorry, it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> no, I guess it's bad enough. You're hurt. Forehead bleeds look bad, but aren't. It's an old pro wrestling trick. Then you slowed your pulse to fake your death. An old Batman trick. But how is it you're here in the first place? Literally. Miss Raquel's a tan. Exactly. A place called the Phantom Zone. Searching for Connor, and you followed the Kryptonian's boom tube to Superman's fortress. So yeah, okay, you're already caught up. But you were attacked by the Emerald Empress and the Eye of Ekron. Oh. Superman and Orion rushed forward to take the brunt of the blast, giving Saturn Girl and I the chance to create the illusion you saw. Faking your deaths. I mean, that feels a little convenient that. Literally all of them would die immediately, but to sell the illusion. Only to be taken down by the McCall Kryptonite I stupidly brought to the <laughs> I like that he just gets curse words in every other uh language and culture. Metropolis? 
Tigress, Zatanna, and Calder just radioed me from there. What, what about, about Rocket? Well, it just gets worse and worse. It sure would. If she was a real main character. Medical That's supply. his bio-ship. But we can take the fortresses. <laughs> Hamster ball! <laughs> Hamster ball. Aw. Uh, baby. That's fine, too. Like, if we're gonna go back to, like, the day ones, we need Hamster Ball, who's, like, Do your duty. day six, but still. Prove you are worthy of the family of Zod. But I guess Hamster Ball couldn't fit all of them? I'm glad. Connor can't. It seems right. Connor, these are my parents. We're all hoping you'll accept them as your parents, too. I... I'd like that. Alright, so it is Power of Love, but not from again. I can't kill him again. I mean, you said it didn't matter. He was already dead. You must kill them both. And the Trogowalk magic is holding, as is yours, Zatanna. All right, I guess that was more like just flying bus. Or yet, but once the sun rises, their Kryptonian cells will charge up fast. If we don't put them down before that, the whole world's in trouble. Also, I mean, we still have solar rays, like during the night time. Hiding a terrifying demi goddess. When the time comes, you can't hold back. She likes picking inconvenient moments to be a pacifist. Like, girl, get to work. I must have my army. Oh, we are getting the Kryptonian army. Do not fear, Feora. This world's yellow sun energy will heal you in no time. Or at least two of them. Vorkil and Jaxa, gather your forces. If you maintain this portal, your army will well, arrive. That, that uses a lot of energy, so let's close the portal and we'll open it in an hour. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> okay, the fire is smart. I can't see you, sorceress, but I can taste your mind. Yeah! How come he can still use his abilities when he's circled in fire? I thought... Didn't they always pass out? Oh. Oh dear. Oh! Connor! Literally! This one isn't family. Kill him. Yes, he is, bitch, first of all. And the fact that you don't think he is says a lot about you. Mother boxes are supposed to be nice. I'm okay. No. You're not. Oh gosh. Such a small fire. How did she just become like a master sorceress? It's like you don't even have to like practice. Read the instruction manual on the magical eyeball. Better take this one down before he goes all super. I mean right before. <laughs> he seems pretty super already. Also, again, we do see that the solar rays do affect them because she heals immediately. Yeah, I mean, you got bitched out last time, Chameleon Boy. I'm not gonna lie to you, so... You should want a rematch. General! No. Power of love! Power of love! <laughs> Stay back. You don't understand. I'm a killer. You're annoying. I still recognize your mind touch. Let me show you who you are. That was crazy of them. Also, remember when they were role-playing as Black Canary? Like, <laughs> so weird shit to throw into the show. Like, that was totally fine behavior from these 17-year-olds. <laughs> or like, a six-month-old and a, how, 80-year-old, however the old McGann is. Weird on every level. Power of love. Hi. Hi. Wouldn't Lex have showing up and being like, the Alpha Order Giver have been much funnier? You help Superman. Calder, you keep Zod occupied. Yes. I mean, I was already doing that. Calder! Oh! You will die for that. Die for- what did she do? Did I miss something? Alright, where's the rest of the league? Y'all on vacation? What's going on? You'd think you'd get a Twitter alert or something. So I'm giving you one chance to stand down. I should have respected your knowledge and my history with the House of L. Here's my thing. Connor remembered 
enough about McGann to be like, oh no, I don't want to endanger her, right? I'm a killer. I'm bad. So you love her. You know that you're in a relationship with her and you don't want to endanger her. But like, show you who you are. That's what gets him to... I don't understand. <laughs> Damn, that's the Damon Salvatore. Ah oh, man. I <laughs> it's like holy shit. But I guess you could do that too and like not kill him. How about picking on someone your own size? Kiki's evil butt out of my head. I could. Or you could. Yeah. You have telepathic powers, my dude. Now this is a uh, that X-Men movie with blue Oscar Isaac. <laughs> Been there. I'm eight years old. Now, while you have Connor fighting Druzot and you're fighting the baby, let's go for the combo. So no, no one from the league is gonna show up. I did all that strategizing and team building for nothing. She really is a my man, my man, my man ass girl. One boom tube to the phantom zone, coming right up. Uh, that's it? Huh. Hey! Uh, miss me, Rocket? How? I'll explain later. Well, that's nice. She's not dead. Here's your reward. Uh, yeah. You were glad Connor was dead. No. No. <laughs> no. He was. He really was. He wanted to take Baby Zod out for drinks. <laughs> you should have waited for your troops. And you should have learned on Krypton. Never Ooh. mess with the elves. That's so horny! Y'all don't have an actual familial, like, whatever, because you don't know this man and he doesn't know you. No, wait! Wait. Stop. Okay, so she's gonna stare a problem, child. So the eyeball, I guess, was like, oh, now y'all want to show up. What happened? He was live streaming this whole situation. <laughs> what do you mean, what happened? It's not even the league, mind you. It's the team. With lore on the loose in a time sphere, we're right back where we started. We won the battle, but not the war. I mean, also, Ursa Zod escaped. I feel like I'm more scared of her than I am of uh, Baby Zod. Determined though he is and very bloodthirsty. <laughs> Do you remember what we told you about Uncle Connor's death? Guess what? <laughs> he lied! That's all true, but we made a mistake about Connor. <laughs> Look, the concept of death still exists, sweetie. But we found him alive. I knew it! Would you like to see Connor again? Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's very short notice. But we're determined to get married right No! You know, this is how we're ending the season? Just love to have you there to share our joy. For ending with a wedding. Yay! Dad, welcome to Earth. We are so excited to be here, Emery. No, oh, you exist. I mean, we're all here. This league sucks. The response time needs work. Well, some of you saw what Garfield went through this year and McGann. The struggles that Andy, Violet, Vic, and some of the other kids. All of our child soldiers have trauma. <laughs> we need a place where our people can go to escape the life. Somewhere where they can receive treatment. A sanctuary. They didn't even kill Danny. And I will always love and care about you. But... but uh, I've moved on. Mm -hmm. Such is life. Not everyone waits for you to heal. We cannot leave the Kryptonians, even Zod in the Phantom Zone forever. All have served their sentences, and then some. The problem is, how are you going to uh, pick who gets freed? They were released on Daxman. A decade later, we're conquering my homeworld, Durla. What about Trombus and its Red Sun? Yes, let them conquer and build their own world. While the League, the New Gods, and the Green Lantern Corps keep watch. She looks great. Any... Actual character building? No, but she looks good. Now, what are y'all about to do with Starro? Bros won't find a single Kryptonian in the uh -huh. 
Clarion was surprisingly cooperative. He seemed to enjoy the hunt. And Apocalypse required only one Kryptonian in tribute. Wait, what? They put all of Apocalypse in the Phantom Zone? Though Lozard failed, the Ma'ala Va'ak did his part. So here, a pristine world for the A'a Shen. Okay, so you name. just want to leave the planet entirely? Durla. So, Chameleon Boy is a 31st century descendant of the White Martians. I popped up in Metron's Infinity Vault, where Metron offered Lord Zaz repaired time sphere as my wife. Wow. How cooperative of him. He said it was in gratitude for past service and part of some experiment he was running. Yes. That sounds more like Metron. Metron preset the coordinates, brought me to Metropolis right on time. But how did he know exactly what time to send you to? It's oh, the yeah, there it is. <gasps> oh! Are, is he gonna put him in the middle of the explosion? Uh, what I'm being I thought it was going to be a really crazy way to kill him. To truly kill Superboy. Are you sure it's not to kill you? But I must hurry. Wait, no! Yeah, there we go. I was like, no, I don't think that's what this is. You pissed Metron off. <laughs> that's where the body... Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little detail. Dark and nice. Mm, he's sitting there like, nailed it. Immortals are petty. <laughs> you saved me. So we only have one Zod left, and it's the scary one. As I said. War is not over. I swear I will raise this child mm -hmm. to wreak vengeance for the house of Zod. And you did. That's Daxum. Probably started this whole situation. <laughs> You raised your son, and he's awful. You really gotta start acclimating to the now. Right? Like, you gotta get used to it, because you're clearly not going anywhere. Oh! Brainy. Hello, Legionnaires. I spoke too soon. But, I mean, everything's a happy ending, so... We hope that the timeline has been substantially restored. Give Miss Martian our best, and have a wonderful wedding. When do you think they do laundry? But you never told me. Why was I so important? Uh, you'll see. I don't like Connor with his hair slits back. Cyborg. A wolf. And Violet and Harper, which is like kind of a sad note to leave it on. Of like, oh, look how happy Violet and Harper are. And meanwhile, Brienne's over here being mind controlled. Like happy, you're happy girl, but. <laughs> you couldn't even get married as yourself? Lame. That even death can't part these two. Still, before the next supervillain attacks, let's get right to the exchange of vows <laughs> and rings. I got him! Aw, that's cute. And he sat back down? That's an incredible toddler, because usually you have to, like, distract them like dogs. Just follow the food, get to the end of the aisle. I didn't know how to love, let alone express that love. You didn't know how to do anything, because you were a six-month-old, force-grown tube baby. Connor, I came to Earth with Pretty messed up notions about what it meant to be in love. But your purity of spirit taught me what true- I mean, Yeah, you're being a real blank slate to work with, so. And now, by the power vested in me by the state of Rhode Island, a uh, Ceridial? <laughs> Nailed it. I now pronounce you husband and wife. It is my honor to officially introduce to you Granny Goodness's two newest recruits. The first, Black Mary, was stripped of her birthright. She is a Kryptonian, captured by the light and turned over to Apocalypse as tribute. Zod's army. This is oh. The Supergirl, the next generation <laughs> of Furies. They really got her in like a Zula core. to take the battle to the so-called heroes who betrayed them. 
what do they have against drawing out a story? <laughs> God, I'm so annoyed. Really? <laughs> like, really? Kryptonians. Zod escapes the Phantom Zone with his wife, his future kid. She's a sorcerer now. We have a boom tube with other Kryptonian, a whole Kryptonian army. And they get out. And it's three episodes left, and you're like, well, maybe it's a cliffhanger. And I didn't want that because we didn't get a show, which I mean, we kind of got a cliffhanger, but I'll circle back to that. But <sighs> a one episode wrap up of Kryptonians escaping the Phantom Zone and laying claim to Earth. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? What do they have against multi-part story? I, I really, like this is the most parts they've ever done, honestly, of like cohesive, consistent storytelling, this like five episode arc. And even then it's like this whole, this whole five episodes should have happened 15 episodes ago. <laughs> and then like this was, if this final episode had been like episode, what was this, 26? let's say episode 11, 12, right? Mid-season finale. We have a whole other season. We have uh, Ursa Zod escaping. She comes back by the actual season finale. We <laughs> actually get to do something with these new Furies that have been introduced. To be fair, there's a lot of Kryptonians happening. I don't know if we need the Supergirl in this current season. That might've been a bit much, but they couldn't do this episode earlier. Why? Because of Rocket's arc? Because of Gar? And it's just like, it immediately makes the bad guys less imposing. Cause it's like, holy shit, a bunch of Kryptonians are about to escape, even in the Phantom Zone. No powers, no touch even. They are a formidable, offensive army. No, it took one and a half Kryptonians and Artemis and Nightwing and <laughs> like, to defeat like no issue ursa be, er, became a sorcerer in two episodes and like in two minutes she only escaped because the eyeball was like we out the rest of not even the league the outsiders plus black canary who's the freaking teacher who signs their permission slips comes in and is like what did we miss what do you mean what did you miss first of all this whole thing has been live streamed <laughs> And if not by those cameras that got broken, by a bunch of people who are in those buildings, who are on the street. And the fact is, we've discussed the people live streaming crime scenes in this show. That's how the Outsiders became popular. <laughs> what do you mean? What did we miss? And I just think this whole show has fundamentally misunderstood how much I give a fuck about Connor and McGann and their whole relationship. They have been the main characters since season one and literally, and I think you can all agree, at no point in that four seasons have I been ever been sold on that. Have I ever been like, yeah, these are main characters. These are people I wanna see more of. We've seen enough. And so it's like, oh, it's full circle, right? It starts with their wedding and it ends with their wedding. But the, here's the thing, when it started with their wedding, I didn't care until Connor died. So I definitely don't care. To end it with them. Let's end it with Dark Side, which they did, but I had to wait till after the credits for that. Power of Love. What is this, a Disney movie? Did we kiss him? Is he Snow White? And I just wanna say, I know I have been overwhelmingly negative towards their relationship, and maybe it's just a me thing, right? But I know it's not just a me thing because other people that I follow on Twitter, as I'm keep calling it Twitter, uh, complained about it. <laughs> And they quote, I had to suffer through Connor and McGann's relationship. So I know it wasn't just me. And maybe it's just me and that one guy on Twitter. And I can't imagine that it's just us two, right? There are dozens of us. Dozens! That every other person who watched this show was so invested that they wanted the whole show to end with their wedding. They wanted to abridge a Kryptonian fight for the, safe, for the safety for the title of Earth. We wanted to cut that short to see them get married. What? <laughs> like even the scene with uh, Clark's son, he's, he's very cute. And you know what was cute? When he ran down the aisle. But did we need to see the scene where they told him that 
Connor's alive? No. They could have cut straight to the wedding. We didn't need a video announcing that they're getting married. You could have just showed us a wedding arch and I would have been like, oh, I get it. And then you could have shown the kid showing up and be like, oh, look, his uncle's alive. That's a nice moment. We didn't need to spend 90 whole seconds of this 24 minutes telling a child that Uncle Connor's not dead. Take those 90 seconds and allot them to the into the final battle. In fact, use those 90 seconds for the League to arrive earlier and actually be of use. And I don't understand how this solar power thing works. They're like, oh, the, once the sun comes up, we're in danger. But obviously, one, solar rays are always hitting Earth. Two, when they came out of the portal and the lady was Feora, when she was bleeding, and same thing with Connor, they came out of the boom tube and they started healing. So those solar rays are still working. So like, it doesn't work unless they tan? Is it just UV rays? Like, throw them in the tanning booth. I don't... I don't understand the mechanics of this. I don't <laughs> Like they're like solar panels, right? It's like they don't really work at night. Okay. The best part of this episode was Metron getting his lick back <laughs> and sending really naive baby Zod back to Connor's death and he's thinking, oh, I'm given, I've been given an opportunity to kill the Superboy, which like, I don't know who he thought would have done that, right? Like Rocket showed up in that bubble. I don't know if he just thought like the bubble was his friend. Like he's like, oh, this time sphere is my friend, so it's gonna go where I want it to go. Like it's not sentient. I mean, everything in this world is sentient, but it's not. So who would have like who had the sphere last? Metron. Who used it last? Rocket. Neither of them are your friends. So why would you be like, ah, oh, I've been given an opportunity because the controls are locked? No, bro, they're trying to kill you. <laughs> like, and even then, he got out of, I guess, I guess he got out of the sphere with the intent of killing Phantom Girl and preventing her from bringing Connor to the Phantom Zone, but... Like, I'm gonna get in this lava pit full of kryptonite. I'm sure this is gonna go well for me. And yet, despite a very naive turn from Baby Zod, narratively, fucking sick. Loved it. His body burned on the wall that we all thought was Connor and all comes... Like, when you have a really satisfying, like, time loop, it's so good. Like, you, you just feel like everything's coming together. Like, I... Time travel stories can be so tricky and annoying in that way because they're so easy to mess up or have holes or whatever. So when it all comes together in a way that just feels natural... Mm beautiful also the idea that uh chameleon is a descendant of a white martian which makes so much sense because they have extremely similar abilities he doesn't seem to have any telepathic abilities though so i guess that breed it out i don't know black canary wants to make a special home for traumatized superheroes um which is nice i'm not i'm not really sure why it, like got its own moment in this season like even as a season finale move, I'm like a little confused about what, and unless there's like a thing that exists in the comics that this was supposed to reference, like this feels like a weird thing to be like, hey, we've really, you know, discussed mental health and all the people who've been struggling with this throughout the season, which yeah, sure. Like, I don't know if they were just trying to put like a bow on the subject of mental health in this season, but it was kind of like, yeah, we need to like do this thing. And I guess maybe in the season five, they were planning to build it. But I don't, again, that's one of those things where I'm like, okay, we use this 90 seconds to talk about this proposal for a uh, vacation home for soups. And I don't know if that was a good use of time. Because it, it feels like if you were going to, oh, we're going to do something with that next season, right? So in season five, you want to build the, the getaway for superheroes. They could have just done that, right? Because you could have just said, hey, like we've had so much stuff happening referencing last season we want to make this and it would have been fine like it didn't need to be introduced here it's not significant enough of a cliffhanger at least for me again if it was a comic book reference I wasn't picking up on my bad but it that's just some like a weird thing to throw in there you know I did not understand these writers all the way to the end <laughs> I feel bad because I feel like this is such a beloved show not just by like the greater populace specifically my mother my mother is the reason this show even happened on this channel because she told me to watch it I started it before I fell off and then I started this channel and then she told me to watch it again and I was like Ugh, fine and a bunch of people watched me watch it and it was great and I kept with it um but yeah I, I gotta be honest 
I don't think I ever hit the level of love and devotion that so many people have for this show, which is such a sad note to end this on, right? Because this was like a two year endeavor and there were so many genuine high points, right? And I feel like you could tell when I was really enjoying it, when I had characters I really loved, when they had these great moments, even in these last five episodes, when we finally circled back to Zatanna, to Artemis, to Dick, to Calder, again, characters who got real screen time. Um, they were so fun. They were fun together. I loved watching them work together. I watched <laughs> watching them banter off of each other. I liked their shared history. All of that was so good and I just felt like they didn't take advantage of it. I don't know. It was, it was that's odd to me. And if you compare it to something like the OG like early 2000s Teen Titans, the Teen Titans were the focus. They had singular storylines but everything circled back to them. Whereas this show or even take it further back, Justice League versus JLU. Justice League was only about these six characters and then in different formulations and different groupings and different patterns, but it was just about them. And then JLU, you go, oh wow, there's like a million characters now. This is unlimited. There's so many people in the league now and they still managed to keep A, a good focus on who the mains were really and B, uplift these side characters in a way where you're like hey this whole episode is gonna be about the question now and you're like i have no idea who that is but i'm invested now because they did such a good job with this like spin-off episode and it's like they tried to do that here where they were always struggling with expanding from our og6 and in a lot of cases just never felt very successful like they did a good job with the runaways and then we never really saw them again. Um, with the Outsiders, it was a 50-50 split because I actually liked a lot of the Outsiders, but I didn't like Gar. Brion, I grew to really like him. We circled back to him and then he doesn't even appear in the final episode, which just makes Violet and Harper all the more jarring. Like Brion's the victim, right? Like we circled back to him just to be like, he is a victim and no one's checking for him. No, like, I mean, I guess he has to save himself, but and sometimes that's life but it's, it's odd, right? Like for a whole season that is dedicated to saving our friends. Brion, <laughs> no, <laughs> figure it out yourself, my dude. Uh, you were too mean to us, so we're not, we're not even gonna try again. Um, Cause yeah, his ex-girlfriend tried, but like that's a little different, right? <laughs> they had a, it was less of a like, you were my partner in battle and I wanna know why we can't communicate versus like, why won't, our relationship worked the same way. Like, it's a, it's a different conversation. I really did not want to be negative in this. I really, really didn't. The thing is, I, I have complaints about this finale, but it's complaints that have persisted with this show the entire time, through all four seasons. So it's like, in one way, I'm not surprised. It's kind of, because I even said like, oh, they're gonna wrap this all up in an episode, I guess. And I, I convinced myself it was gonna be a cliffhanger, which I shouldn't have because at no point in the show's history has there been like a major cliffhanger of that kind. So, more fool me. I think there's something fundamental about the writing choices throughout this whole series that I never really rocked with. It always felt like the writers had their own main characters, their own favorites actually. I wanna say main, they had their own favorites. And those favorites got the time and the attention and the care and the storylines and the arcs and all of that. And then the characters that they didn't care about as much, they made it very obvious that they did not care about those characters as much. And if you, the audience member, are going, hey, well, what, let's, let's spread the love, right? Like, you're not getting that. <laughs> this is a really morose note to end it on. I really didn't want to. I was honestly psyching myself up to love this. I wanted to love this. I've been loving. I mean, well, the penultimate episode was where my concerns really cons concerned, they ballooned. But like for the prior three, four episodes, I was having so much fun. I was really like this, there's so much happening. There's so much potential. And once again, I just feel like it got squandered in favor of the writer's favorites, which is frustrating because this is not a teen drama like I guess it is but you know what they did they like it's very CW that's what this is if this was a live action this would be a CW show and I don't think a lot of you want to hear that but it's true <laughs> like the difference between this and the Vampire Diaries finale minimal <laughs> In the Vampire Diaries finale, they defeat Satan, the unbreakable curse is broken, the main character and her boyfriend fall in love, become human, and have babies, because that is what a nice, wholesome, suburban family does at the end of a show, and that's how you know they're in love, right? They got married and they're gonna have little babies. And 
it's, it's not satisfying. It's also a supernatural. It's a CW ending. That's all I'm gonna get. That's the issue. It's a CW ending. I pulled back from any real shockers. It's not that I wanted Rocket to be dead, but at least you're ending on a like, whoo. I mean, not really, because again, if you were gonna kill someone, she's the least impactful person. But like, oh, my OG person is dead, that's shocking. Oh, Danny Chase, this tragic tale of an 11 year old who's abducted and his brain ripped out and put in a box with superpowers that cause him physical pain and potentially could kill him. Do they kill him? No. So all the emphasis that we put on the fact that his powers are killing him, didn't go anywhere, because that's not a happy ending. I, I feel like I sound like George R. R. Martin, like, let's, some, let's kill some bitches. Like, it's not it, but there's... Well, the worst thing that happened in this episode was that they're gonna have to, like, a lot of LED bulbs got broken in Times Square of Metropolis. Like, that's, that's it. <laughs> it's the worst thing that happened in this whole episode. <laughs> Everything else is great, resolved. Um, oh, it's, it's not resolved because Ursa got away. Fair, right? That's the only lingering consequence. But even then, what's her plan? Just state mostly? Like she flew away to go be pregnant. Like not even like, I'm gonna go back and seek vengeance. It was like, I'm gonna raise this baby. And then my baby, who's more important than me as a person, he's gonna go and he's gonna seek vengeance. <laughs> also, it is weird that uh, she's not like looking for her son. Cause as far as she knows, he's still alive and not in the phantom zone. So you feel like she'd fly away and be like, let me go find my son. Then I'll have two of them. Then we'll have a little army of three. But I guess not. <laughs> I kind of thought this was gonna be something like Castlevania, where if you didn't watch it on Netflix, seasons one and two are magnificent. Season three, something went horribly wrong. Season four, very good, very good follow-up. And even then, as a whole show, I would absolutely recommend it to people. Like, have you watched Castlevania? You should watch Castlevania, it's so good. And so I was hoping, like, okay, season one, season two, season one, I was mid, season two was really good, season three, like, I had, it was a little rocky, season four started pretty good, I think, with, like, oh shit, Connor's dead, and then we had an Artemis arc, I know I love Artemis, that was fun, Calder existed, mostly did nothing productive, but, you know, he took a little break, he's got a little boyfriend, good for him. Um, Rockets arc, mostly a waste of everyone's time, this, excellent. So it's like, we had this little, like, I was like, do you like McGann? Eh, but oh, Artemis. Ooh, Calder. Oh, Rocket. Oh, ah, like, it's just, oh, I forgot Satana. I, was it Tan Satana was before Rocket, after Calder. I don't remember which one she was, but I really like Satana's. But like, that's the point, right? That we have this really wonky season line and it's just like, it feels like after season two, the show lost a lot of consistency. And so, and I know that part of that is the the cancellation, bringing it back, you know, the fans want it, but the studio's not supporting us. And even now we're in that situation where they had a season four, which from what I've seen has had mixed reviews. Um, and now we have David Zaslav at Warner Brothers and we have Max, HBO Max, Max, we have guilds, we have strikes. Uh, <laughs> so like, who knows, right? Like it's not, it has not had an easy road production wise and that does affect things like the writing. But as someone who's been watching it over the course of two years, I truly wish it had been more satisfying than I think it ended up being for me. And for everyone who truly loved and adored this show, um, God bless, right? Like, if you have a show and you love it, that's amazing, right? Like, there's no better feeling than like loving a show and watching it and rewatching it and it's still impacting you just as deeply as the first time you watched it. So if that, if this is that show for you, hell yeah. Was it that show for me? not quite. But I don't regret watching it. I'm happy I watched it. I'm happy I went on this journey and I'm happy I went on this journey with all of you guys. Um, Cause I've like, yes, my obviously been my longest show that I've done. I did a couple of the Marvel shows, uh, which are all, you know, like eight episodes, kind of quick things. Um, and this was, this was a commitment. And I think part of the satisfaction is in having stuck with it for so long even in some of the lower moments. So I'm very proud of that. I, I always appreciate the show for the journey it took me on and for the kind of behind the scenes work um, 
both mental and um, editing wise that went into doing this for so long so I'm very grateful for that and if I haven't made it clear already I'm very grateful for everyone who's watched this I'm really grateful for the you know same like six seven people that I see in the comments every single week um, I'm very grateful for anyone who said that like watching my videos has made them happy in any capacity like that's so crazy to me um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. And please let me know, six, seven people, <laughs> you know who you are, um, what shows you think I should be watching next. I won't promise I'll do them immediately because I have a couple other things in mind that I probably wanted to do through the end of this year, but 2024 is open. So if you have anything you'd like to see me watch, like please let me know and you might get to see it. So I'll end this one here. Thank you guys so much. Catch you guys next time. Peace.